Hello and welcome back to the Vancouver Actors Podcast. I am your co-host, Michael Coleman. And I'm your other co-host, Cindy Quinnell. And today uh, we are with a local headshot photographer or photographer in general, extraordinary Brandon Hart. And we're going to get into a lot of different ideas today in terms of, uh, well, the A to Z of getting the right headshot. So, you know, whether you're starting out or whether this is something you've been doing for a long time, uh, our... Our 8x10 is still our number one uh, marketing piece, is still one of the things that is probably the most imperative element of our business as professional actors is this 8x10 uh, snapshot, this moment in time. This is how a lot of uh, our opportunities are, are first created and initiated. So we're going to get into a lot of different things today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what you're going to look for, what photographers look for, the collaborative process, how to ensure that you get the best shots possible, how to make sure that you get headshots that create opportunities that create opportunities. Uh, before we get too deep in though, we should thank our sponsor, uh, weaudition.com. And if you use our code Vancouver Actors, you get 25% off uh, on your uh, audition uh, self tapes. So this is a service that in a, well, in a self tape world, uh, post pandemic, pre pandemic, pandemic, in any environment, these guys aren't gonna stop running their business. And very quickly, uh, I saw this happen just this week on Facebook, this one actor was like, guys, I really need a female reader for this role. Like my boyfriend is not cutting out for it. And then she couldn't find anyone and she ended up taping the opposite roles for herself. Uh, don't do that. Sign up for weaudition.com and using the code Vancouver Actors so you don't have to read for yourself ever again. And also on that note, uh, when you audition, you don't get to choose the gender, age, or uh, orientation of your readers, et cetera, et cetera. So that's going to be a separate podcast that's now been spawned from this lovely nugget. Uh, we don't get that luxury. That's not how the acting world works. So we're going to keep this podcast focused. Uh, this is how the real world works. This is how you book real world stuff. Um, but weaudition.com uh, at the very least, the one thing you should always have, as Sydney has just articulated, is a professional reader. Uh, one of the things that I think that often gets missed in in the audition process is that it feels like uh, often we have people that are just doing monologues in our general direction. And one of the reasons we hire professional actors to read with you is we want to see what you look like when you're doing a scene, not just making offers, but receiving offers and behaving truthfully under imaginary circumstances. So uh, well, let's get into how you can even get audition by having great marketing materials <laughs> we will get we will get <laughs> yes but before we get into that really quickly really quickly we audition.com it's a great uh, it's a great website and a great app and it's an off opportunity for you to not only always ensure you have a professional reader but you also can submit to them if you wish to add that to your revenue streams and offer your services as a professional reader so that is an opportunity ah yes and as uh, Sydney uh, was suggesting we should jump in to our actual interview here. So, uh, Brandon, what do you uh, you want to say a little hello and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, my name is Brandon Hart. I am a well, I'm a photographer in Vancouver. I work with a lot of actors. I've been doing this for uh, just over ten years now, and uh, I have photographed a lot of actors over the years. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So over ten years. So that's a lot of headshots. I yes. think. <laughs> I think it was Malcolm Gladwell who said it takes 10,000 hours to be really good at something. Yeah. But I got to figure you got to have well past 10,000 hours. You're, you know, according to Malcolm Gladwell, you're, you're past expert territory. So you're, <laughs> you're in the sweet spot. Um, so you've, You've been shooting for a while and gone through yeah. the different generations and probably have seen and done a lot of things. Uh, before you were a photographer, though, hockey guy, yeah? Uh, yeah, the I was a junior hockey player. Uh, Where'd you play? My, <laughs> I played. It's now uh, a hockey podcast. If anyone's yes, listening. Yes, we are talking about hockey now. Um, I played in. Oh God, I was all over the place. I played in Summerland. I played in Langley. I played in Estevan, Saskatchewan, in Chilliwack. Unreal. That's yeah. great. Yeah, it that's was, fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 my background, which is a. Um, a polar opposite of my next step, which was actually uh, going to acting school. And yeah, you went to VFS, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. yeah so how'd that go? Great. I graduated in 2007, and um, it's funny to think how long ago that is now. Right, yeah. And uh, yeah, then after that, I, uh, yeah, I became a professional actor for the next, I guess, three or four years, and 
Um, yeah, it was going well. I loved it. I was extremely passionate about acting. Yeah. I still am. Um, I still feel like I'm involved in the acting circle uh, because of I do <laughs> because of what I do. But, sure. Um, I never meant to become a full time photographer. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of worked out that way. And if you're good at it and you like it, I mean. Well, that's the thing is that I think that if quite often in life, uh, you know, if if you do something and it it feels like the world is giving you something. I think it's your job to say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I said yes to photography and, um, you know, 10 years later, here I am. I like one of the things you have on your website, you speak about the uh, accumulation of life. And yes. yeah, brilliant. Uh, I'm also a, a very big believer. Uh, also for those of you playing at home has some thematic synergy with uh, films such as Star Wars or Harry Potter and uh, the good and the evil and the choices you make and all the experiences you have uh, make exactly who you are today. So you have to embrace all the good and all the bad and all the positives, all the negatives, because whoever you are today is a culmination of all those experiences and all those thoughts and all those, uh, I guess, uh, relationships that you've had that brought you to where you are today. So, you know, the difference between like a Luke Skywalker or a Darth Vader or a Kylo Ren versus a ray is people who lean towards the light or towards the dark many of us have the exact same experiences but we lean into it differently harry potter versus voldemort so i don't know who the voldemort photographer is <laughs> but uh, we're going to assume you're the harry potter of photography or maybe we'll give you a loose guy or a oh. ray you could be who you want on the good side we don't have to name names so that we don't get canceled. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll take whoever I can get. Yeah, so, but uh, I think it's actually a really interesting philosophy. One of the things I really appreciate, it's, you know, I've been working as a professional actor for over 30 years, and I've worked with a lot of different people, and, and uh, I've always been really appreciative of whatever people's backgrounds are prior to getting into the process. The directors I've preferred to work with, Hmm, that's going to get me in a lot of trouble. Uh, <laughs> directors that I have often on occasion found a level of alignment that is unique is uh, those that come from the acting background. So you as a photographer that comes from the acting background, I think is an incredible resource to us because you'll have a different understanding and paradigm to with what our headshots do. And, and what's going on behind the camera, what's going on with the actor for as sure. they're taking yeah. the photos. Because I know that I've taken headshots of people that are just like, okay, pose like this, I know it's really awkward, but it looks really good. And then I look at it, I'm like, it doesn't look good because you didn't give me a way to not look awkward while doing it. Yeah. Um, so I find, because I, I did photography while I was a, uh, an assistant to a photographer oh, cool. in high school, is one of my jobs. Very cool. um, and I know that it's a big difference from watching that photographer grow into yeah. learning how to teach uh, normal people how to pose and actors how to pose. I sure. think that it was. Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because, you know, kind of going back to what you're talking about, we all have our own way into these things. I mean, yeah. every photographer is like anything, right? Uh, any photographer is going to have their own way into to how they do this. And um, I mean, my, my technique has developed a lot over the years. At first, I was very much a actor's uh, uh, headshot photographer or when I was shooting headshots. And... Uh, um, you know, I would really pull at the heartstrings and try, yeah, yeah. And try to pull out the truth. And, and I, I still do that, but it's not as, uh, it's certainly a very different process than when I first started. I, I bet. I, it doesn't need to be a Meisner exercise. No. <laughs> who would it, you would have had shots before you were a shooter. Yes. Do you remember who you <laughs> shot with? I sure do. Who'd you shoot with? Pink Monkey. Did you? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I think it, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, uh, fairly early on in their career as uh, photographers and um, um, they're very 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 lovely people I showed up the uh, showed up my for my headshot so I, I graduated in 2007 uh, got the headshots done in um, in January of 2008 and I had and of course I'm in my early 20s at the time and I was going through this awful breakup with a girlfriend from acting school and oh. I'm miserable and I'm already oh, in that no. acting school headspace. Well, save and the drama so, for class. I know, what are you doing? I know. <laughs> and so I show up to, for my headshots and um, I, I think I must have had an hour sleep and I was just feeling awful and I show up there and, and they just said to me, they said, 
you look like you haven't had any sleep. And I said, I, I really haven't. I wanted to. And they said, uh, well, we're not going to be able to get rid of this on camera. It's going to show up. Yeah. Um, you're going to look tired. And I, I said, oh, God. And I felt awful because I felt like I wasted their time and everything. And, and I was wasting my time and they're expensive and everything. And they were so lovely. And they said, go home, take care of yourself, come back, um, uh, Come back another day, and we'll do your headshots. Then I'll, wow. I'll never forget that they're they're very gracious and very kind people. Without naming names, have you ever had to? Uh, have you ever been able to return that, or have you ever found a situation where you needed to recur turn that wow. sort of a situation? Karma oh. into the world. You, you, <laughs> many times. I've I bet had, I, I had one. <laughs> I had a really good one this uh, this summer. Uh, uh, one of my clients uh, that I shot a number of times over the years, uh, Daniela, she um, she was coming from the island, so she's coming from Victoria uh, to have her headshots taken, and she was going to extend it and be here for uh, I guess five or six days and stay with a friend, and um, uh, gets out of her car, she walks in, and she just starts laughing. And uh, I said, what, what, what are you laughing? She says, Brandon, I left my clothes. Oh, no. And I said, what, in the car? She said, on the island. Oh, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I joked and I said, you know what's actually really funny? I forgot my camera today. Um, and I did. I, I, have, I have a number of cameras, but the one that I use that at the time that I used specifically for headshots, I'm like, yeah, I, I forgot that. So this is, uh, uh, this is. Uh, I suppose some sort of synchronicity, and uh, why don't you come back another day? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Karma's good. Karma's good. <laughs> yes. uh, on that note, on the the tech nerd side, because I like the tech stuff. Sure. Uh, what's your favorite camera to shoot headshots with? Do you have like a favorite? Uh, do you have a favorite box? A favorite lot lens? Do you yeah. Have a favorite thing. What's yeah. your stuff? So right now I've been having fun. So I've had, I've, well, obviously I've had a number of cameras. Over I bet. Years, and right now I uh, for. Headshots. Actually, for almost everything now, I'm shooting with the Fuji uh, uh, medium format GFX 50R. Sweet. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a very very cool camera. Yeah, cameras are interesting. Like you know, I get a little bit because I do a little filmmaking, and it, it's a dangerous rabbit hole because there's so many. Just a little own a production company. Well, but, but <laughs> it's like you know, you get into the the different things the different cameras do, the lenses, the accessories, and all these sorts of. You know, you could spend a kajillion dollars and yep. still have a wish list a yep. mile long. Yes, yes, you can. Yeah, so it's there's a lot to it. Um, all right, so what I want to get jump into right now, what I think would be really beneficial is I think uh, what we want to do on Vancouver Actors Podcast is make sure this is informative as possible and empower actors to have a little bit more control over their success or lack of success uh, based on their own efforts and their own willingness to do research and work. So we're big fans of work smart. You don't necessarily even have to work hard, but you got to work smart and you should probably work hard too. Mm -hmm. So on that note, um, what are some things, what are some pieces of, I mean, I could probably ramble off a bunch of things over 30 years of headshots that I've done, but I'd rather hear it from a photographer in terms of what are some simple things like, you know, in improv, we play a game called five things. Like what are five things that you're like, you know, if every actor just did these five things, everybody would have like killer headshots. It's really easy. Sure. What are five things that might be really cool that uh, actors could do? Sure. Um, well, uh, now, are, are you? Can this be anything? Is this is this in any particular uh, category? Like uh, I'm coming from like on the day of the shoot, or, or I'm saying yeah. So when they show up at the shoot, sure. in terms of their, we could also do five things prep, five things shoot. Sure, sure, uh, yeah, whatever you'd like. Okay. I, I'm thinking in terms of primarily in terms of uh, accessories or physical condition that they arrive in. Sure. Um, well, with regards to uh, uh, preparation, I mean, uh, I mean, like with anything important in life, uh, show up well rested, well hydrated, um, and prepared. And 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 when I mean prepared, I mean to know what you're trying to achieve. Um, yeah. Far too often, and I, I stress this hard with my clients to know what you want, know what you're trying to achieve with this, because. Uh, far too often people come come in and uh, and I say all right so what are we what what looks are we shooting today and I'll get a 
well, I like this red shirt. I like this jacket. I like, I like, I don't know, this. And, yeah. uh, and so then what happens for me is that I have to come in and say, okay, well, what, that doesn't, yeah, are you the same castable. person wearing different exactly. outfits? And so the, the, most, the most important thing that we can do uh, is to have photographs that are castable, that when a casting director looks at that photo, they can say, this is where uh, he, she, or they is playing in that, uh, on that show, in this role. And we want it to be almost painfully obvious for the casting director, for the director, for the producer, that we can do that. So the best thing that you can do, or one can do coming into the photo shoot is know what you want to, know what kind of roles that you go out for. Talk to your agent, get that sorted, figure it out yeah. at home before. Uh, go through go through outfits. Look look on my website. Look on multiple photographers' websites. Just look at headshots. See what uh, see what looks good. Look at your wardrobe. What you like and and you know tie those two things together and then and, and then you can actually start to do something that uh, or at least you've got a level of preparation that you can start with. As, so that hydration, yeah, preparation, yeah, good sleep, yeah, and uh, and communication with your agent. That's yeah. extremely important. Um, yeah, and then uh, I mean when when you're there on the day of the shoot, I mean just um, come in ready to work. Uh, it's I think far too often uh, actors will come in thinking, oh, I'm working with so-and-so photographer. They're going to make me shine. Uh, I've seen their portfolio. They're great. Yeah, they probably can help you along the way there, but don't just wait for their direction. If like it's a photo an, of you. Absolutely. You're an actor. It's your job to understand that... Well, it's not necessarily your job to understand because when I've had my headshots taken, I went in thinking uh, kind of the same thing. It's like, oh, they're going to tell me what to do and I'm going to do that. Uh, since being on the other side of the lens, uh, I try to make it much more of a um, an effort where the actor is actually acting and using their skill sets so you can actually be an expert at what we're doing. So if you can come in with knowing that you can use those skill sets to your advantage, then what happens is that you, it's just another form of preparation, I think. I love it. There's so many things, so many things in there. So, you know, <laughs> we can unpack. A lot. We really can't. So I'm going to go back to, you know, the thing that always blows me is when, wait, is when actors show up with a whole mess load of wardrobe and say, what do you think I should wear? Like, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. Like, I literally know every item of clothing I own and I know what clothing I wear for things. Like I have this blue shirt and this certain suit. Yeah. That's my wedding shirt. Sure. It's my wedding suit. <laughs> like when I go to weddings, I don't I don't mix it up. Yeah. I look good at weddings in that shirt, that suit, that's what I wear. Yeah. Yeah. If I went to a headshot photographer, yeah. I might say, here's a second shirt or here's a little bit of a color for the pocket yeah. or like the I pocket have, square. I have three Hallmark outfits. Right. That I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is my secretary Hallmark outfit. Yeah. This is my like baker. This is my girl <laughs> on the street. Like I have the three different yeah, so I feel like, outfits. I think it's really important. You know, we also, you know, I, I, I grew up in a time where we didn't have cameras, let alone them on our phones and abilities to send them. But like, I'm always floored that people don't take, take pictures in advance of, here's me and this, uh, this. Uh, like you could actually send it just on your phone to your agent and say, here's some yeah. looks I'm looking for. Yeah. Anything jump out at you, or you could send it to other friends or your yeah, so acting coach. area yeah. that you have and put it on portrait mode, on timer, see what it'll kind of look like with the bad quality that is a phone yeah. and then be like, okay, I want this, but better. But, but the point being, you can create these looks and before you even get to the headshot photographer, you and your team, because you're running your team, could have looked at a bunch of looks well in advance so that when you're sitting there, you might be helping them pick out, this is why this color will work or this is why yeah. this outfit might not work or we can. Well, it's like you don't, like when you see a breakdown of uh, auditions, like a casting breakdown, you don't just message the casting director your one headshot and be like, what one do you think? Instead of like actually submitting for one character yeah. and figuring out which and one actually, you it's, it's, it's actually a good, uh, you know, think of that as almost as an analogy. You don't, uh, you don't, when working with a photographer, to actually, you know, bring some ideas and actually try to act for the camera. Uh, because you don't call up the casting director the night before an audition and say, hey, so uh, um, 
any good ideas for beat changes? Right, exactly. Like, you would never do that. It's ridiculous. I and mean, unless that's available, if casting are <laughs> <interested laughs> listening, we'd love to know if that's yeah, an that option. Would, that would actually be awesome. <laughs> if, you could just, if, if you could just call a casting director and be like, hey, so just tell me what to do and I'll stop <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really good at You this. do it and I'll just yeah. copy you. If you could do that, that'd that's be sad, a help. That there's a lot of actors who do show up to auditions and they're like, yeah, I'm here. I know the words. What do you want me to do with them? Yeah. Right. So I guess the, the point with these ones here is that make sure that, you know, make sure you find out what your responsibility is so that when you show up, you're not putting the onus on, you know, I think a lot of actors, especially in the early days, I think a lot of people think, well, my agent will take care of my business. My photographer will take care of what I'm supposed to look like. My, you know, there's a lot of, la there's a lack of accountability in a lot of places. And I think the onus always has to be. Who's the CEO? You are the CEO of your company. So I think it's important that, you know, actors walk in with an idea. That being said, I also think it's important to note that you can't force photographers to make crappy photography. If I was a photographer and somebody wanted me to only shoot crappy headshots, I wouldn't do it. I'd be like, you know what? I'm probably wrong for you. Yeah. I'll give you a list of people you should go see. Because uh, like, it's- Hey, here's my vampire outfit. How <laughs> <Yeah>. do you think? <laughs> because it's going to be a reflex. So it's a collaborative process. And you know, every photographer is going to have a different vibe or style. So that's part of your research is make sure you're shooting with somebody that aligns with you in terms of process. And you know, going back to like the hydrated and the well rested, should be drinking or going out partying the night before. I mean, even if I'm on my best behavior, I'm at an age where I don't get zits unless I got headshots the next yeah. day. It's the only time my face is like, oh, do you want the pimples to come out? I'm like, yeah. oh, you got to be kidding me. You knew I had headshots. I was keeping that a secret. Yeah. Um, and surprising, not surprisingly, uh, I'd say <laughs> everyone has that happen to them. <laughs> yeah, it's such a weird phenomenon. <laughs> Whatever it is with our face, our zits just know when we're getting headshots and they're like, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna wear the best outfit. I'm gonna jump out my super huge. Yeah, yeah, it's my turn to celebrate. Um, so, you know, uh, the other thing you'd mentioned is just creating a good environment and things like that. So I know like when I, I'm always somewhat embarrassed when I bring a playlist for, for, for a shoot, my, my daughters are five and nine. Yeah. It's literally the music I listen yeah. to. I listen to music <laughs> that five-year-old and nine-year-old uh, children listen to. Yeah. It's what I rock out to. So, but it also puts me in the right headspace. Sure. And it's where I feel like when I'm thinking of my wife and children, it's where I feel most empowered. It's where I feel most creative. Yep. It's where I feel, you know, like I'm ready to do my thing. Yeah. But what's your thought? What is yours? Do you do that? Like, do you have like to put on some music or how's your vibe? Which because everybody's different, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, for me, if if uh, if somebody wants to bring their own music and, and that makes them feel in the zone. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. For me, I, I'm kind of it. Sometimes I feel like I feel like music. Sometimes I help. I feel like that helps bring stuff out of people there is this uh there's this one song that i used to play years ago i haven't done it in ages but there's this one song i used to play years ago and i wanted to get like a really deep photo of somebody yeah and uh um but these days, yeah, my technique is has shifted so much that uh there are days that i don't even turn on the music um because it's just me connecting with another human being. Mm -hmm. so. For sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, uh, I have a thing that I do, but I'd love to hear some some additional uh, ideas from you. So one of the things I learned early on in my career to save both me and the photographer a lot of time from looking through photos that neither one of us wish happened. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, we shoot a lot of clicks, right? Or we shoot, it's just, it's a part of the business. So I developed uh, a, a thing that I found really effective because for me, it's always the eyes. The eyes tell the, the yeah. biggest part of the story, right? So uh, a thing I learned early on was I, I'll often create with a photographer, like I'll intentionally look down until I have a secret that I only want the photographer to know. And then as soon as I want the photographer to know that secret, I'll stare at the lens when that secret comes out. Okay. And that's where my best work usually comes out. So everyone's going to have a different thing. But for me, I know if I want my eyes to have the, what the hell is he thinking yeah. about? Look, I know I don't have, like a lot of times, like right now, there's just a small gerbil running around upstairs <laughs> and that would make terrible headshots. But when I do that, yeah. I mean, the photographer work magic, we're not sorting through 400 million to find one good shot. We're like, these are a lot of good shots. Yeah, the I eyes are there. That for myself, when I had a couple different shoots, I was really struggling in finding, um, like if I paid for five photos, I was struggling to find five photos sure. that I wanted. 
Um, and it wasn't until I actually went in and I decided to not act in it for one and just like meditate and actually be as authentically myself. I was like, oh no, I want all 300. And it was just like that huge difference between just like actually remembering that the camera's looking into your eyes. Yeah. So just be yourself for a moment and then turn it on from there after you've like, it's like letting it in and calming down. And yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what's interesting about uh, what the both of you just said is that <clears throat> every person works differently. Yeah. Every person. Uh, so, you know, with, with my method, uh, you know, I'll often be asked by, not often, but sometimes I'm asked by young photographers, like, how do you get your results? Like, how do you, like, what's your method? And I always tell them, well, my method is to figure out how my client works. And then I manipulate my strategy to how they work. Mm -hmm. And because um, if, if the photos or if the photo shoot is all about me, then it, then the photographs end up being my judgment of the person that I just met. Right. If I make it about you and who you are, if somebody is 40 years old, they're coming in with 40 years of life. Um, and if I just met them 10 minutes ago, who am I to tell them who they are? You know right. what I mean? And yeah, so, yeah. For, so and, and, and so just to kind of bring back to what you, both of you were just saying is that, yeah, it's um, everyone works differently. And, yeah. you know, hopefully you uh, can get yourself into a situation where you're working with someone who knows how to draw from what you're giving them, so to speak. Um, what you were saying about secrets, yes. Yeah, it's good, yes. right? Like yes. the secret thing is so gold. Like it's something I wish I, like back in the day, my first, and this is probably before your time, but we <laughs> all back in the day, in the late 90s, mid 90s, shot with a gentleman by the name of Nick Siflo. Yeah. And we all shot with Siflo, and we all shot in the back alleys of Gastown. And it was usually <laughs> after it rained the day before, we all had the exact same shot, yeah. but it was magic. They yeah. looked so good. We all looked like 21 Jump yeah. Street. You, you all got the secondhand smoke. <laughs> yeah, it was so crazy. But, <laughs> That's what we did. But uh, like, I wish I knew some of these things. Like those shots were great and a lot of fun, but I feel like the photography evolved with the storytelling as more people like yourself yeah. who had gone through the process of learning, not just the you know technical side of photography, but also the organic or authentic, authentic side of performance. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I feel like the, the, the craft of photography has really evolved, particularly in this market where we've grown night and day. Yeah, I think that I, I think it's evolved for the most part, and uh, and I suppose uh, devolved in some ways as well. Um, it's it's involved in, or it's evolved in so many ways in the sense that uh, yeah we're able to uh, yeah we're able to take many photos very quickly and then that way you can get the one that's just bang on. But interestingly, uh, what that does, um, so back in the day when you're shooting film, most photographers would have shot with a medium format camera. Yeah. So medium format cameras, uh, they would have been sitting at a uh, waist level, level viewfinder and the shutter would be like this. And so back back then what happens is that yeah the, the the subject or actor is looking into the lens but the photographer standing there and he or she is just having a conversation with the person and i'm just waiting and waiting and waiting and then click yeah, yeah. and these days and of course you really need to capture that moment because on a medium format camera with film, you only get 10 photos right. and a roll of film is $8. <laughs> yes. And if, yeah. if, I mean, if you're processing the film yourself, that's one thing, but if you're getting someone else to process it, it's another $8. Yeah. And so these things can, I mean, I was looking back at uh, uh, kind of some of the old uh, um, headshot packages from the early 2000s and it would be like, yeah, we shoot four rolls of film and, <laughs> you know, and so uh, what happens is that, what I've, you know, because I've, I've, I've shot some, uh, some film myself. And so what I, what I try to take from that is that the, so with my camera, a lot of my technique now, I, what I do is that I, I, I break down before we even start, I talk to the actor for probably about 20, 25 minutes, just about how to do this. Yeah. And I, and I teach them how to use their acting skill sets 
to their advantage, Perfect. why they are an expert to do what they're doing. And then, uh, and we do those things, but a lot of my technique now, honestly, is I just have a moment with you and uh, hopefully, it, so let's say if I want a nice, strong, closed mouth smile photo, I would just do this with you. Right. And I have a genuine moment and then I bring my camera up and I take the photograph. I think that's gold. I love it. See, I, I, I think that what I love about that is it's actor speak sure. to get yeah. actor results. Yeah. And again, I can't stress this enough. Like, this is our number one marketing piece. This is our key piece where people make decisions on whether you even get in the room to have the opportunity for the opportunity. Thing. Yeah, like this is, this is it. This is, you may not even, to get the audition, you need the headshot. Yeah. And you can't even get the job unless you had the audition. You can't get the audition without the headshot. And it's just, it's so crucial. So, you know, it's, I find it really interesting now, like right now you could shoot an entire feature film on an iPhone. Yeah. So everybody, unfortunately now is the technology, yeah. which I think is actually one of the worst things in the world because now we all create the illusion that we know how to do it. But there's so many other elements. There's so many other things to get the right sure. shot that we've been discussing. I mean, I've been to, workshops that were offered by different acting schools where they say like donate food drive stuff and you get character uh, photos. They didn't say headshots but I kind of assumed it was headshots and I showed up there and it was a phone and I was like <laughs> I am so angry. Here's my cans. I don't need to take the photo. Like here's my food. I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. And like so it's very interesting how people um, and I see a lot I'm in like groups like uh, headshot photographer groups where they post everything and it's just really interesting seeing the different styles even uh regionally mm -hmm. and then also how many people are like will these work for headshots and i'm like no they won't yeah and uh and yeah i mean that's the truth is is that yeah everyone's a photographer now everyone is a videographer now and you know what that's cool um, there's, it, it can make it a little bit more challenging to know for it, to, for, for someone to have clarity of what good work and not good work is. But yeah. like when it comes to like, if we're talking about, you know, me as a photographer, does that worry me? No, no, um, uh, I, but, I would think it would, like, no, but, but, but you're right. Everyone is a photographer these days and a videographer these days. And, uh, that, but that's great. You know, I mean, that's, it's great. The, the, like I said, the challenge obviously becomes being able to, um, decipher between good work and not good work. So now as an actor and as an acting coach, I guess this is where I'll chime in with my two bits on why you should always get a professional photographer. So actors only have one job and that's serve the story. It's literally all we do every day, all day long. We serve the story. Now a photographer has the exact same job. However, what we get to do with multiple words, uh, camera angles, time, dialogue, they literally get a single frame. They get a moment in time to capture a story as to who you are and how to represent you. So I would always just never disrespect the element or the amount of expertise, craft, and uh, experience that goes into telling telling the world who you are in a literal image, a, 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 a frame. It is such a short thing. And I think it's such a unique skill. So just something that, that it, it's not about wearing the right tie or having the right smile or being, you know, cute as the Dickens. Is that a saying? It feels like it's a saying. Uh, <laughs> It's not any of that. It's, uh, you know, it's when we're casting, like we want to see somebody who looks like, yeah, that looks like a firefighter. Yeah, that looks like a professional. Yeah, that looks like somebody who fights aliens or whatever it is. And and as much as, as actors, we often think, oh, I can do all of that. I can do all of it. A, a professional headshot photographer really will really make sure that that shot embodies those things that you're trying to well, do. Well, you don't want to be a caricature. You don't want like no. character photos to be a caricature. You want no. You want to be your version of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I mean, that's. I mean, it's it's like uh, the exact same thing as that if you're acting the scene, um, you're not going to act about the character. You're going to assume that people believe that you are that, and you are going to dissect it and speak it in the way that uh, that you would within the realm of or within the uh, um, framework of these lines of dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the difference of wearing scrubs in a photo versus a v-neck shirt kind yeah. of thing because you yeah. can they can see you in that character but you're not just like I am a doctor. I know. That's all I, I know. know. I, I love those like so in LA <laughs> 
So one of the things as a, as, as a photographer, I, I research headshots all around the globe. Um, here, I'll have a lot of clients, not right now, um, but a lot of clients who will go back and forth between here and Asia. Um, and so knowing what headshots look like in Asia, what I'll often try to do is, is give them headshots that look like that. Same thing with New York and Toronto. They're also very different from Vancouver style sure. headshots. Mm -hmm. And then LA headshots, which are the worst. Right yeah. now um, they're like all like primary cry. color backgrounds. Uh, like, blah, blah, blah. Well, those are, those are okay. Like, I don't like, I, I think that's cool. Like I, I, I don't mind that. I don't do it. Um, but I, you know, sometimes that can look pretty cool, but, um, but a lot of LA headshots are about like the glam, I'm going to be a movie star. Like yeah. it's, it's very much LA. Right. And one of the things that's so funny is, to me anyway, hopefully I don't sound too judgmental, but, but they, uh, you will actually see like normal looking headshots in like, like as a doctor, as a firefighter, as, as a police officer. And you look at that and it's like, Oh my God, why, why? why yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I like, we've got a rule here. Like whenever we, we uh, audition people or self tape them. And our rule is if the best part of your audition was your outfit, yeah. your audition was probably not very <laughs> yeah. good. And if the best part of your headshot is your outfit, fail. Uh, yes. There's just to suggest rather than. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So there's lots yes. of different ways that you can get a proper headshot or a, or a self tape without going so over the board that you didn't think we'd get but it because your funny, acting wasn't strong enough. Yeah. Um, I was a reader one time for a cast director in town and the cast director couldn't come in because of snow. And so her casting assistant was there and a, it was for a doctor role and a bunch of people came in in full doctor garb. And yep. every time they came in, I was like, hmm. Uh-oh. Then the casting system was like, wow, I love it when they're in costume. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> But that just shows that everybody has different opinions. And, and, everybody, and everybody can has. do it. Everybody can pull off different things, you know, and, you know, sometimes it can work, but I would say always let your acting be the best part of your headshot or yeah. the acting be the best part of your, your audition. If you do mm -hmm. that, you're going to find yourself booking more work and getting better headshots. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. I mean, I, I have, uh, so a number of, uh, so I've developed relationships with a number of agents over the years and uh, um, every agent they have a different opinion about how this For is. Sure. Like I've got I've got some agents who uh, uh, I've got this one look that I do that's just really tight, yeah, black background. I do that, and I've been doing that for years. It's one of my favorite looks. It's it's and and the idea of it is to be a photo that is uh, that is this is me and this is the depth in my eyes and this is me Sounds present. Smart. Like that, that, that's one of my looks. I have a few agents in town who love it and that's all they want me to do with, sure. with, their, with their actors. I have other agents who say to me, I don't know what to do with this brand. Right. And, and, they, and those agents are more uh, really character specific. Like they'll get, they'll get this type of character, this type of character, this type of character. And they want all those because they want to get super specific with their submissions. So yeah, it's, there's no wrong way to do it. Um, of course, as an actor, I mean, this is a, this is a totally different conversation, but as an actor, it's your job to, uh, to make sure that you're developing the right relationship with the right agent who is going to submit you the way that you think works for your career. Well, that, that's exactly it. Like I, I hear that and hopefully the listeners are paying attention to how many people are involved in the process and, yeah. you know, remembering that you're the president and CEO of your company, but you have some very cool professionals you work with, photographers, agents, coaches, all these different people, and everybody's going to want to have an aligned vision and everybody should have input and everybody should have input that helps make your art and your work better. But at the end of the day, you have to make sure you're on a team where everybody is aligned with how you see yourself and how you want to move forward. You don't bully your way through, but hopefully you find a way to find people that see the story the same way you see the story. Otherwise, you might be with the wrong agent. Or you, you know, I would I would never just wait for a photographer to tell me what to wear or my agent to say, go buy this red shirt and then go shoot with that photographer. I, it would remove you from the process. And now again, you're not even you're not even doing the one thing you do, which is tell stories. So I'd always be involved in the I process. I think that it's very interesting how as actors, our career is very, um, there's a lot of people trying to drive your car when there's only really one steering wheel. Like mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of backseat drivers and sometimes you do need to listen to the other directions. <laughs> I think that's where it all comes down to. Like 
if a photographer is like, mm, that color probably won't work on camera, maybe listen to them because they yeah. train photography. You did not. Yeah. Or an agent. They have been an agent for way longer than you have even thought of being an agent. Yeah. So that's like times when you need to listen to the professionals and let yourself be the professional actor and let someone else be the professional photographer. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I think that uh, I think that goes way beyond our industry. I mean, that's just life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's it's life to um uh to it's your job to find uh the people that you want around you and then it is your job to listen to those people and yeah. so sometimes you make an error in judgment yeah and you move on and create a new relationship uh but yeah i think that i think that what you're saying is absolutely true and i think it goes so far beyond our industry, it's everything. For sure. Well, I do have a quick question for sure. you, actually, uh, just before we jump topics again. Sure. Um, <laughs> so for when you have a uh, like package, so you're yeah. offering multiple looks, yeah. uh, would you consider like if someone's asking you, hey, I want to work in LA and Vancouver, mm -hmm. I have a home in both, can one of my looks be a very LA driven sure. headshot kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I mean, uh, Naturally, it's going to be within the realm of what I still consider good work. Yeah, uh, but, sure. But but yes, I, I so yeah, and 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 I often do that. I often do that for uh, um, for actors who work here and in Asia. I often do that with actors who work here in New York. I mean, I have so one of the things with New York is that headshots in New York are very expensive. They're yeah. very 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 expensive and so i had a client um right before i guess this was 2019 yeah it was it was pretty much right before the pandemic um it was more cost effective for her to fly to vancouver shoot with me and i shot new york style headshots for her isn't that crazy because she liked my work yeah, and she was originally from Vancouver, but she's been in New York for quite a while. I've seen it that was, a lot online. Actually, it was more cost effective for her to fly to Vancouver, shoot with me, and then fly back. And she got to see her family while she was here. That's I've awesome. seen packages like in like the talent managers for actors group. Yeah. People are like, if you're not paying sixteen hundred dollars for headshots, what are you doing? I'm yeah. like, us not paying sixteen hundred dollars yeah. for headshots. I would also say we're really we're really lucky in Vancouver that not only we have, have we evolved in an industry in certain areas. I'd say we were right across the board. Like I'd say, mm -hmm. you know, the photography in general in this town is quite strong. Yeah. Uh, in addition to our crews and our talent, everything's evolving at a, at a lovely pace uh, together. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, I realized so very quickly I need to backtrack. Pay professional prices though for professional photographers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Know their worth uh, and don't undercut yourself if you're a photographer. Sorry, continue. Want to make that very clear. No, <laughs> I, I, I totally get that. So one of the things I like to do, so again, being efficient, I think is something you owe your photographer as well. So, and I would label that maybe under the preparation thing. One of the things I like to do when I get headshots done is I'll usually, you know, I, I reflect back to when I was a child and we didn't have internet. So when you wanted to do research something, we had a family set of encyclopedias. And if it didn't live in the encyclopedias, then it didn't exist. That's yeah. where information <laughs> lived was in like 30 books. And if it wasn't in one of those books, I guess it's make believe. Yeah. But now we all have the internet and all these things. So one of the things I do is I utilize this magical device and I find a bunch of headshots that I like, I'll usually look at actors that have a similar look to me or a similar, um, they have similar hits that we had audition for the same sort of thing, but I'll look at them on a, on a bigger scale. Like I do a lot of like Simon Pegg or Steve Zahn type stuff is, is an actor that I'd use. And I go to their headshots and then I find a couple of shots and I'm like of the megastar version of me. Yep. And then I'll usually send like maybe five or six shots and say, Hey, I like the, uh, I like the lighting of this one or the composition or the framing or the whatever. And, and, and just so that the photographer and I have a, an, an idea and I'm like, look, I don't want to copy this image, but I think the lighting really sells this thing or this look. Like there was a look for a little while with LA where there's this certain sort of backlight and created like a halo superstar effect, which I actually don't even love, but everybody was doing it and it kind of made everybody look like you were sent from heaven to save acting and uh 
I'm not sure that should be the answer. It's, uh, you know, I have had way more fun playing the uh, role player stuff in film and TV. But um, do you have other things like that? Like I said, like, uh, so I like to usually send, like, here's up to eight to ten pictures or something of, and but I'll have very specific reasons. So I won't just say, sure. here's ten pictures I like because they're fun. Put them on your fridge. Because he's cute. Yeah. So I'll <laughs> say, uh, you know, I like the lighting. I like the framing. Is that something you, you've experienced before? Or do you have other ideas like that that makes your job easier? Um, I mean, I, I, I definitely don't, uh, yeah, I mean, when, when we're, when we're shooting stuff that's, uh, not headshots, like if we're shooting, uh, commercial work or, um, or if I'm working, uh, with an actor's publicity photo, say someone who's in a, a, you know, a lead in a TV show or something, and we're dealing with their manager, we're dealing with their publicist, um, uh, though, like inspirational photos, that's a big part of everything. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we all know what we're trying to achieve. Um, it's good, smart. Oh yeah. So, I mean, does it normally happen with headshots? No. Right. But can it help? Sure. Like it, it just gives that much more clarity. The only thing that you probably shouldn't do is show up to your headshot photographer uh, with a whole bunch of inspiration photos from another person in the city. Yeah, I agree. No, I was just saying you were going to go there. No, but like, honestly, the, yeah. it's actually really funny because there have been times, uh, and they when might not someone, even realize it. Yeah. Either. Like, like someone showed up with like, uh, um, they, they're showing me inspirational photos and it's like seven photos that like Carolina shot. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you here? Yeah, you're yeah. Not, like Why are you not like... working with Carolina right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that, I know, right? That's such a weird, I, you know, and that's the sort of thing, just again, going back to owning the business of your business, like you're the president and CEO of your company, you, it, it, you, you wouldn't go to the keg and say, you know what you should do? <laughs> Earl's has this great item on their menu. Here's seven yeah. items that Earl's does. Can I, you make me this? Like, I don't understand having like, like whenever I did, my, my headshots, I've created mood boards for every look I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, there's a song here, there's a, sure. and I don't sh- like always show it to the photographers, but I have, I like look at it before I take my photos. I'm like, ah, yes, these TV shows, this thing. All right. Totally. But I wouldn't be like, hey, you see this poster? We're doing this. I'm yeah. posing exactly yeah, yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah. Do I look like it? Well, I think that, you know, for me, I think that that goes right back. And that's awesome that you're doing that uh, because that goes right back to the the preparation part of... I show of, a bit of a type of, A personality. Yeah, <laughs> no, and so am I. And so, uh, the, you know, if, if you're if you're preparing yourself to know exactly what you're what you're trying to achieve or at least kind of get you know, get the, the, the general idea of what you want to achieve for each look, then, uh, no, that's, that's fabulous. I mean, that's, that's, that, that is so helpful. Like my favorite photo shoots, honestly, uh, when I'm doing, when I'm shooting headshots, my favorite shoots are when people come in with specific looks. It's like, I want this, 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 and this. Great. This is easy. Now Uh, all we have to do is- Now we can just figure each other out. Yeah. All we have to do now is focus on story character relationship and communication and we're good which is still a shit ton sorry grandma <laughs> a crap ton. wow this <laughs> podcast just went pg-14 we even had a cuss word in 15 episodes yeah, she just swore to grandma yeah. <laughs> my grandma listens to us on the way to work oh sorry, pandemic grandma. is making every we're losing control here what are you doing you're out of control what i was trying to say is it's still a crap ton of work that you have yeah. to do even yeah. when you're prepared so yeah. why be not prepared because yeah. then you're just adding three times the for sure yeah for sure yeah so let me ask you this because i mean we've ranted and raved and there's a few other quick questions want to do but i think we should at this point insert how the heck do people find you see heck it's right <laughs> yeah, at the same point heck, heck. I, so I had so many words that were available and i went heck how the heck do I people so find good. you in terms of photography well, uh, there's this uh, there's this new thing called the internet. Yeah, it's really good. It's really cool. Mm. I just started using it. You can get it. food delivered to your house. <laughs> I heard Bing is the way to go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's the future right there. Um, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's uh, Brandon B R A N D O N dash Hart H A R T dot com. So that's Brandon dash Hart dot com. So it's not an underscore. It's the underscore that floats like a magical one the dash yes, yes it is well technically i suppose i should say hyphen hyphen yeah um, uh 
uh, and uh, well, actually, that, that reminds me. This is a quick side note. I thought it was yeah. really funny. I had a client uh, the other a couple of weeks ago. She said that her friend works in. I don't know if this is. She says it's a true story, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Anyway, she was saying that. Uh, there is uh, at the, at the uh, hospital, the maternity ward. There is this child that uh, that is named L A. Ladashla. Ladashla. Is this? Have you heard it's this? It's a too? viral story. It's a viral yeah. story. Okay, so this. Ladashla. I heard it as a teacher because I heard it in early. Her name's Lala. Okay. Okay. So this yeah. is not a real story. This is just some. Um, it could be though. It could a very be. Okay. Name. So Ladashra. Okay. So lots of people have heard this. Ladashra. I was I was making the joke. I said. I wonder if she knows that her daughter's name would actually be La Hyphenra. Which is kind of cooler. That's a pretty <laughs> dope name. See, that's a great name. <laughs> that'd be like calling Spider Man like Spider Hyphen Man. Spider Hyphen Man <laughs> is the best superhero ever. Uh, but yes, it is Brandon Hyphen or Dash Heart.com. That's brilliant. And uh, you're shooting now. The industry's uh, doing lots of fun stuff. So yeah. people can get a hold of you now and get a hold of the, the shoots. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, stay hydrated, well rested. Guys, like, I can't stress this enough. Like, I get it. Life's Start tough. Start a week before. Do your skincare routine. Do yeah. sleep properly. Yeah. It Drink is water. literally the most important tool you have in your toolbox. You don't shoot them every day. You don't shoot them every month. It's something that you have to treat with a lot of care and respect. And the rest of the world is really tough. I get it. There's lots of weird stuff happening. Hydrate, rest, uh, bring your clothes that are ironed. Like yeah. they're not going to yeah. launder your clothing for you. <laughs> Be ready to go. Have a couple options, but also know what's in your wardrobe. If you got a blue shirt and a suit and you know you kill it at weddings, why would you wear anything else? Yeah. Uh, and that's just a good rule of thumb. Am I, am I not right? You're right. You're right. Yeah, I'm that's right. Right. I'm right. They're like, if you're killing it at weddings. I do I mean, kill it at weddings. They're going to dance in. And, oh, it's the whole thing. Suspenders. They call you MC for a reason. So you got that right. Um, this is So uh, any last words of wisdom or advice for people that are looking to, like, ensure, what we haven't talked about is when should people get new headshots? Like, uh, what, what's your advice on that? Um, uh, every few weeks. Yeah, <laughs> and pay triple, uh, tip uh, well, tip well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'd say, I mean, it depends. Uh, uh, I think, I think anywhere between, uh, you know, every one and three years is probably good. Yeah. And uh, one tip that I can give for actors. So uh, my wife and I, when we want to travel, what we do is we, uh, uh, we put in uh, $50 each into an account yeah. every week. And oh, interesting. And by the time we go, uh, we uh, usually have about eight or $9,000 saved up. And so back in 2018, we did a month in Italy. We got home. My credit card bill after a month in Italy was $226. So saving like that was great. So as an actor, if you do something similar, because headshots... After hair and makeup and everything, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like it to cost more, uh, <laughs> but, but, of but but it's it, it's expensive. But I know sure. that a lot, and, and especially now with with uh, with COVID and like things are uncertain, things are uh, you know financially just all over the place with so many people. Um, but I think it's of, like it's similar to what I've said about training. How it's more expensive to continually not be booking, not getting auditions, sure. that it would be then paying a couple hundred dollars for headshots when you Yeah, really and, and and that's the thing. Like just like the you go to your go to your bank. It's not scary. I avoided it for years. I then got myself a banker and realized, oh, I should have done this ages ago. Right. Um, get yourself a, a banker, ask them to 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 set something up into a savings or just a different account and have $10 a week come out of your bank account and go in there. Smart. By the end of the year, you'll have enough money to pay for your headshots. It's really smart. It's really smart and simple, guys. It's, uh, you know, and I guess my advice to, to, to actors would be anytime you feel like your your look has changed or anytime you feel like maybe you're not getting into the room for the roles you want to be seen for. Like there's a lot of different motivating factors that might necessitate new headshots. You know, I've got, a, you know, actors that started when I started, you know, I know some of them get upset and they're like, can you believe that I'm getting submitted for like 30 year olds? And I'm like, you're a 40 year old. And they're like, and your headshots are from when you were a 20 year old. Like, holy cow, man, what 
are you doing? Yeah. We're, we're old now. We're almost dead. Get new headshots before yeah. it's too late. Um, so make, <laughs> make sure, make sure. It's not very morbid. Yeah, it really did. It really did. But no, make sure you update your look and make sure you know what you're doing. I also well, recommend. Honestly, my old headshots, I was getting cast as a 30 year old when I was 20. And now somehow I have an audition as a 15 year old for my headshots. Yeah. Way more calm well, and not like in it. Yeah. And I mean, here's the thing is that like you will often in, in, depending on your skin, depending on how you've lived your life, like oftentimes if it's five or seven years, you will look similar. Like I look back at, at my headshots from when I was in my early, uh, from, I guess when I was 23, I'm 36 now. I look at those photos, minus the white hair and a little bit of weight, I actually mostly kind of look the same. Well, yeah. honestly, the, I thought you were like 25. Yeah. <laughs> Tops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. And then when you said um, 2007, I was like, oh, well, I'll, honestly. I'll, I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> um, uh, but the thing is, is that the biggest change um, uh, is the story in my eyes. Ah, uh, yeah. Because I've lived more life. And the other thing uh, that I don't think people think about often enough is that if you are getting new headshots every year or two, it is telling casting directors that you take your career seriously. For sure it does. And if you're showing up to that uh, audition with, well, I suppose I don't print them very often anymore, but if, if, if that headshot just gets, oh, it's Michael's headshot again. It's Michael's headshot again. Yeah. It's Michael's head. I, I wonder if he's focused more on the acting school or rather than actually the auditions. But you know what I mean? Like, I and, do. And I, I just like that you assumed I got three auditions. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that was flattering. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so if it's like, oh, he's got a new head. Okay, so he, he's in the game. She's yeah. in the game. They're like, oh, the they game. got new headshots. I wonder totally. if it's because they booked something else. So I that's, wonder... that's a danger. I think a lot of us try to spend a little, you know, the thing that I hear the most is I'm going to spend money as soon as I start making money. So everybody kind of wants to get their career on layaway. It's a thing we used to do in the 80s. Uh, yeah. So everybody wants their career first. And then they'll, then they'll, yes, at Sears. <laughs> you want With your career. Cat. <laughs> but you have to, you have to spend money to make money, guys. And you got to spend money smart. And, you know, here's the spoiler alert and the sad reality of running a business businesses will have ongoing expenses and again we, we've said this a, tr a hundred times well now i'm exaggerating we've said this countless times through this podcast it's literally your number one marketing piece it's the number one thing that gets you in the room it's the thing that if you did nothing else and you should do other things but if you did nothing else at the very least you should be updating your headshots making sure they're sharp making sure they're reflecting the hit you're going outfit uh, out for you should be making sure you're involving your agent they this is the tool they use to get I you also in the room. I feel like they, it shouldn't be the first thing you do because I think you do need to have a little bit of that acting training. Before you need some training. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So make sure that you know what you're doing before you get the headshots. But once you're ready to start auditioning, involve your agent. This is how they get you in the room, but you need to be a part of that process as well. You need to, you should know what everybody else knows. So when you're having conversations, you're not sitting like a deer in headlights and hoping that everybody's guiding you. You should be a part of the conversation and understand. Similar to what you'd mentioned with the story here with the headshot. I really liked that idea. The thing that I like most about that, you as a storyteller, know exactly why that story works. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that story works for everybody and it hits other people brilliantly, but because you're able to articulate why it works, that's a really strong tool in your tool belt. And yeah. I will say that you can go through, especially right now, there's a lot of um, lifestyle photographers who are yeah. branching to head shop photography. You can go through so many $50, $100 photo shoots and you're not gonna get what you want when you could have just spent the couple hundred on the first one. Wow. And like it really depends on who you're going to, but right. I just found that that happened for me at least. I yeah. kept trying to go to the cheaper ones and then I was like, what am I doing? I don't look great because I'm not going in a great direction. I'm sure they're great with people that know what they're doing, but I didn't really know what I was doing yet. And well, you're, you're, you've been throwing out uh, life less lessons left, right, and center. <laughs> I mean, but that, again, that goes with that goes with so many things, right? I mean, it yeah. goes with, um, uh, you know, just, and I've learned that lesson so many times over my lifetime, just do it right the first time. Exactly. And it might not, not still work out, you know, yeah. that, that it does happen sometimes. It Sometimes it doesn't work out. Things in life do, don't work out sometimes, but at least you're putting yourself in the best position to, to succeed. Um, uh, and what, what you were talking about with regards to, uh, about just kind of, these being your uh, uh, 
you know, your one really big piece of marketing materials. Yeah. And I can't, it, you, you made me think about just the countless, countless, countless times over the years where I've had uh, actors come to me and say, yeah, I, I feel like I should be going out for, for sci-fi and CW stuff. While they may be good, uh, good work, I think to myself, like, man, these are, of course you're not. Yeah, which is you look like a Hallmark dad. Totally, like, and like I had, I had one client, um, uh, Sarah, years ago, and she, uh, uh, um, she had been working with uh, the same photographer for years, and really good work, really, really, really good headshots um, uh, over the years. And she was saying, but I'm, I'm all I'm ever going for is is these babe rolls, right? And I'm looking at the headshots. I'm like, well, yeah, of course, because that's what you are in all of these photographs. And I said, yeah, I, I can get. Yeah, let's get stuff that's specific for CW, for sci-fi. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, come in. We shot that. And uh, I got in touch with her, uh, either that or vice versa, uh, uh, about a month later after after she got her photos. And she, uh, I, I said, so how, how are they working out for you? She's great. I've, I've already I, uh, uh, I booked uh, 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 two days on Supernatural. Right. Um, I, uh, I, I've got a callback right now for, for The Flash. I, and, I, and, and it's like, well, yeah, you had the look all along. Yeah. She said the headshots didn't make sense for what you were going like for. Like our friend Tassia even said that every girl who wants to be on a show that is like, like she was on The 100, so like The 100 where you're kind of grimy, wear a white tank top and yep. just like don't do much. Yep. And everyone needs one of those photos. Yep. And, and she's great, by the way. She's great, isn't yeah, she? she yeah, yeah we, she's uh, she teaches with us here at the school. Oh, and really? I was her acting teacher oh, no. oh, uh, before cool. she got into acting. And cool. uh, yeah, she's an amazing human being. Oh, we, uh, we did promo shots for her um, back in June, I think, of last year. So um, right. yeah, she's awesome. Photogenic. I mean, oh, just the, yeah, she's got she's, so much magic going on behind the eyes. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like. Again, she's, yeah, she'd be fun to shoot. She's just fun to work with. Instagram.com slash Tassia Tellis. Yeah, she's, <laughs> no, she's, she's awesome. Um, I had this other fellow uh, uh, come in. This was last, God, every, with COVID, everything's just kind of all over sure. the place. So it, was, it was right before. I was in February last year. Um, he came in, and he had... He was one of these, this doesn't happen very often, but he was one of these people who sent in a headshot and uh, of why it wasn't working out. He wasn't going in for anything. And he went to, uh, um, was it the neighborhood? Um, was it neighborhood or? Are you thinking New York? In New York. Yeah. yeah. So like this is one of the top acting schools yeah. in the world. And he went there and, uh, and, he, and he wasn't going out for anything. And I saw his headshot. It wasn't very good. It was way too overexposed. It just wasn't good. Sure. It wasn't good work. Um, and he shows up and I see him, I'm like, you don't look anything like this. You're really handsome. Right. Like you are, you, you should be going out for leads and with your training. And so I worked with him and I got this one photograph that you look at it. It's like, man, that's like, you look like Johnny Depp. Like you look like a sexy, sexy gentleman. And I compared it with the other photo. I showed some of my photography uh, uh, friends. I was like, look at this. And they were like, is that the same guy? <laughs> you know? and like, no one's going to know that he trained in New York because no. if you like on breakdown services for all you actors out there that have never seen it, yeah. it's just headshots and yeah. then you click and yeah. then you find out more. Yeah. Funny story. Nobody has had that conversation with me ever. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever said, oh, you know why you're not working? You're too handsome. Yeah, it's I mean, actually, my mother and I have that conversation well, as, outside of that. As, as one does. Right, as <laughs> one does, as one does. We all, we all find our special niche. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this has been brilliant. This yeah. is excellent. So to summarize, I just want to sum this up and, and thank Brandon for being here. And this is really cool that I find that one of the things I really appreciate about this town is, is I do think that they're one of the things that has uh, had a lot of the industry gravitate to Vancouver is that this is a very communal support supportive idea and I do believe that you know when we diversify and strengthen our community it creates more opportunities for all so the fact that you'd come and share this information is really super cool uh Brandon hyphen heart uh, <laughs> dot com right yes. did I get right the dot com so which makes it super official and legit uh you know what don't 
don't undervalue or underestimate the importance of proper headshots and keeping them up, up to date. Do your homework, spend an extra, you're worth it. You're worth it. If you don't set your value, somebody else will. Set your value. You're worth the research. Look up headshot photographers. Look up headshots. Find people that look like you, walk like you, talk like you. Find the things you like. Learn what makes a shot pop so that you're educated. And then when you go to your photographer, you can speak their speak. And I guarantee your session will be infinitely more valuable, infinitely more enjoyable. And it's probably a relationship that you're going to grow over the years. Totally. So uh, we want to thank you guys for listening here. Uh, thank you, Brandon, for being here. Brandon-heart.com. Uh, a big quick shout out to our uh, sponsor, weaudition.com. Again, use the uh, access or the, what do you call the it? Code. The special code. It's probably got a, what do you Discount call these code? codes? Discount code, special code. Uh, promo code. Promo code. Promo. Yeah. Uh, Vancouver actors. Just put, there's going to be a box. It's going to be empty. And you put Vancouver actors in it and you'll save money. You you can also let them know if you're a professional actor who's available to be a reader. It's an additional revenue stream and it's professional it's like actors. It's the Uber of auditions because yeah. there's, there's a star system. You can only, you'll choose the best for you. Yeah, so make sure, you know, we're all being smart, we're all being safe, and we're all putting our best foot forward in the uh, coming weeks and months as we transition through this confusing and uh, continuously uncertain time. Uh, we'll give a big shout out to our uh, producer, Lydia Rimmer. It is her last time with us. Uh, we had to fire her for inappropriate behavior. No, uh, Lydia has moved on. She's gone on to bigger and better things. Hard to believe. Uh, we wish her the best of luck. And uh, we're hoping that perhaps in her new role, she will find a way to help sponsor us because you know what? Everybody loves the Berg, but if it's Carl's, then that's a really great one. So uh, we're not going to say where she's going, but uh, Lydia's moving on. And before she moved on, for those of you who are watching this instead of just listening on one of our uh, audio platforms, Lydia wanted to come out and do a little dance for us. <laughs> she's shaking her head up and down. For the she's listeners, like, this is what I want. She's just, she's throwing up the horns. For she the is listeners at up. home, she's doing a full pirouette right now. Oh. She's doing, <laughs> oh like, my gosh. She's breaking it down. She's absolutely killing it. Wow, Lydia. So wow. for next week, we're going to have a, uh, a brief hiatus in terms of, uh, no, we're not going to have a hiatus. What am I talking about? No. I've lost my uh, ability to use words. What I'm going to say is that normally you would email any of your podcast questions to Lydia Rimmer at storyinstitute.ca. Uh, for next week, you can uh, email myself directly, Michael Coleman at storyinstitute.ca. Michael, uh, common spelling. Now it feels like I'm talking to the police. C-O-L-E-M-A-N is my surname at storyinstitute.ca. Any questions? you have or any topics you want us to cover or any uh, wonderful guests like we had with Brandon here to, you know what, let's all get better together. The more uh, we strengthen this community, the more inclusive we are, the more diverse we are, the more opportunities we get for all of us. So let's be the change we wish to see in the world. Brandon, thank you very much. And uh, bye. Bye. <laughs>